priests and many other holy men, as you would call it, prophets of God. And that's another con misconception of the American Christianity churches today, that that's Old Testament, this is New Testament. Well, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And a prophet's a prophet. An Old Testament prophet is still a prophet, and a New Testament prophet is still a prophet. And there's no such thing as an Old Testament prophet and a New Testament prophet. As far as I'm concerned, there's a prophet, there's a shepherd, there's an evangelist and a teacher, and... Um, you know, there are apostles, and, you know, like you look at Abraham, I would consider him not only an apostle of God, but, you know, a prophet of God. Uh, and I believe that, you know, these men throughout all generations were the same, just as God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I believe the Lord is, 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 is not saying, well, this is back then, and that's been done away with now, and this is this, and that's been done away with. Um, you know, there's too many people that, that try to categorize things based on their religious Christianity of America and their religious perspectives. Um, and what I see with this, Daniel, is that, uh, you know, the problem we've had in America is they've had a wrong model in the churches in America today. It's just like people say, well, you know, the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, such as, well, sure, the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, but you know what? The Spirit of God was with them from the beginning. And the prophets of God had the Spirit of God in them from the beginning. All of them, Moses, Elijah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all these guys had the Spirit of God. And it's only one Holy Spirit, so it's the same as yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We just got to get rid of all this nonsense of 101 Christianity out of our perception of uh, doctrinal belief. Get rid of that religious understanding of Caesar and everybody else that likes to try to bring up the laws and point fingers at people. Wow. Uh, <laughs> sounds like you're pretty convinced of that. Um, I guess the question would be for people... Something in the biblical ancient text says that there is a test for a prophet. Uh, do you know about this test of a prophet, of a genuine prophet, and have you passed it? I know about the test for a prophet, um, and I also know men that are prophets of God in this land. Um, I know that when prophets pro declare something of God's judgment, I also know that sometimes those things can be averted by God's mercy and de and delays can come forth. Uh, most people don't know this and most of the great Bible scholars that are into numerology or prophetic jama um, or all the other types of things they may be into, they one of the things they miss out is they forget to calculate the three delays in the Bible and because um, the Bible speaks of delay. Um, I know that um, a good friend of mine that uh, I should say that I've supported for 17 years who made a proclamation for a, 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 a depression in 1999 wrote a book about it and the depression did not come in 1999 as he was declared that said that it happened however uh, that event is still going to take place the man's still a true prophet of God it's just that the timing was delayed for the season at the time for God's mercy and so what most people don't understand is they try to you know, throw a mirror and some pasta in people's faces about a lot of stuff in this country, and yet they themselves are not prophets of God. And the last time I looked in the Bible, yes, we need to test all things and hold to all things that are good, but the last time I looked in the Bible, according to 1 Corinthians, is that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the control of the prophets, not subject to the control of the people or anybody else, although the people need to test and discern to see whether it be of God or not. Uh, but um, we've got to understand that um, it's not subject to the control of them. It's subject to the control of the prophets under the power of God, and the prophets are accountable directly and only to the Lord God Almighty. And so it doesn't mean that, you know, there's loose guns out here. What it does mean is that there are prophets of God that are accountable. Jeremiah was accountable to God. He wasn't accountable to the nation. He wasn't accountable to the nations. Ezekiel, Isaiah, all these men, Moses, they were all accountable to the Lord God and Lord God Almighty himself and him only. Not according to uh, some of these religious ones that think that they're, they're, they're going to lord over them with their religious spirits. And so, yeah, it's all good. I know that when one person quotes scripture, there's going to be somebody else that's going to quote some scriptures pretty much right back at you. And uh, I this this week... I got an inbox full and of, of, of emails and scriptures, just tons of them. For, you know, they, they could have made a, made a book in some of these things that are trying to refute some of your beliefs or some of your actions. 
Uh, and, you know, just to let everyone know, I, I can't read all those. I, my, my inbox, it gets hundreds of emails, but I, I get the gist of it just in the first two or three s sentences of some of these emails and, uh, um, you know, the argument. And so it, it seems that I'm wondering if there's a way that those who write these big, long emails with this, the scripture, their belief of scriptural fact and evidence, couldn't they ever come back? Uh, to say someone on the other side who has an equal but opposite length of scriptures, how would these two two camps ever be able to meet and discern the truth between the two the two camps? With the big long emails that I get, um, is there any way that those that everything you say and believe they have a scripture to refute? And let's just say if you wrote down your beliefs with scriptures, is there any way to bring the two camps together? Is there, will those camps, those diametrically opposed camps, ever come to an agreement uh, together? Is, is that a possibility? Or, okay, um, I kind of agree with you there. And in, in, uh, you were talking about. Oh, by the way, I like I like that. Uh, some people got more more demons on them than bats in a cave. I like that. I'm going to use. <laughs> I want to use that. <laughs> that sounds like an edge, an edgeism. Um, but you did mention judgment, and uh, I want to go to this question here from the fast blast. Uh, I get a, a viewer has a problem with you, Matthew. They say that uh, they believe that the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus, and according to their understanding, we live under grace and not judgment. And nowhere does the teachings of Jesus or the apostles talk about judgment being poured out on the nations. Um, I don't want to go a tit for tat or scripture against scripture, I guess, or believe, believe, but I mean, is there a way you can answer this question? What did the judgment end with Jesus, or is there another judgment that's coming? Uh, Daniel, um, ever since the Reformation, there's been over 22,000 different denominations, non denominational fellowships, and I don't think any one of these people ever will agree with each other. The prophets never look for to go and say, look, do you guys agree with this or not? They just went and did what God said and spoke what God told them to say, and there, that ends the story. Period. Whether they like to hear it or not, that isn't my problem. Or, or whether, whether you know, another prophet stands up and lands and speaks forth whatever God tells them, that's between him and God, and it's not between him and all the other people in the whole nation all of a sudden, and it's not open for debate. This is not a democracy. What it is is that the word of God is to be spoken with power, with holiness and boldness and fire from the kingdom of God. Prophecy will always confirm and point people to Jesus Christ, to the Scriptures. And myself, uh, I know that God has had me call the spirit of repentance among the land and to call and point people back to Jesus Christ and back to the Word of God. And that ends the story. Whether they like to know that they want to stay in Babylon and hold on to, like Lot's wife, where she held on to the things of Sodom, and that's some of the problems with the struggles with these religious ones today, they want to hold on to their little cities, their little comfort zone, and their houses, and their materialism. And when someone comes in and speaks judgment, which was mentioned, um, and the word struck or strike the land with rods and staffs were, were done over 259 times in the Bible. Uh, and just because they got accustomed to their little religious Christianity 101 in America, all of a sudden now we're living in the end days and these things are starting to happen and, and a man shows up on the scene like John the Baptist who goes and calls for the spirit of repentance in the land for correction back in the church and to get rid of the religious spirits that most of these guys are operating in, especially the ones in Florida. And um, when you start to stand up and speak out like that, and all of a sudden it's like, oh gosh, you know, I mean we're talking about, you know, these guys, some of these guys have got more demons on them than bats in a cave. And... Um, you know, these critters are hanging out, and they just don't like to see the, the power of God show up, and all of a sudden it's foreign to them. Why? Because they try to put God in the box, number one. But number two, their little religious systems and their religious games that they play with their morsels of doctrines in their pockets that they've carried over from where they... Uh, it, it just goes beyond their borders. It's foreign to them. And so, therefore, since it's foreign to them, the, the obvious thing to do is to attack it or to uh, refute it. And... Um, Everybody's trying to get the Bible thumping days out. That's one of the reasons why the church is not effective in power evangelism and can't even evangelize beyond the book to point at another brother or sister in Christ that's speaking the word of God. Uh, no, the judgment never ended just with Jesus. Jesus said he was going to bring judgment upon the earth. Ezekiel chapter 21 speaks of that he's going to reign the judgment of God.